Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. In today's video, we're gonna be working on an existing system, trying to make improvements to it. Now, what we have going on here is we have channel drains that run down the back of the home, but they stop halfway. And we have an existing catch basin here that we're gonna be running the channel drains the rest of the way to, to help it drain better. This client is still experiencing flooding back here because the channel drain was only ran out the left side of the home and discharged to the street curb. And the way it was discharged was also improper, but we'll get to that later in this video. So we're gonna start by popping these pavers out so we can go ahead and lay our channel drains in place. Now, I like installing my own systems the best because I know that they're gonna function properly. Whenever you're working on an existing system such as this, you never know what you're going to get and you are always going to be running into surprises usually and extra things that need to be tweaked and fixed to try to get the system back into action and working up to par. But I mean, take a look at some of these things that these guys did. I mean, of course, duct tape on the joints. I always tell you never use duct tape in a drainage system. It doesn't belong in a drainage system. It belongs on AC ducts. So we're going to go ahead and start by digging out our dirt here where the channel drain is going to be placed. And you want to make sure that you level your channel drain with a bubble in the middle. So we're going to also get to that later in this video. But as you can see here, a trenching shovel makes easy work of digging this out. It fits in there nicely. That way you can get your channel drain set in properly. Now the other thing that we're going to be doing to this existing system is we're going to pull all the grates off of this channel drain and we're going to clean it out thoroughly. We're also going to run the hose down the main line and we're going to flush the main line out the best we can and get that water flowing a lot better than it was when we first got here. Now you can see there's all kinds of debris and buildup in this channel drain. That's why it's very important. I always tell everybody if you're getting channel drains installed, make sure Whoever is going to install them, they put the ones where the grates can pop out. You don't want to put any kind of channel drain that has grates that are built in solid plastic all the way around. That's just going to make for a headache when it's time to clean them out because you're going to have to cut open sections to be able to access them. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier in this video here. This is a one and a half inch line that they ran underneath the sidewalk to drain this system. Now, I mean, this is just insane. You do not ever want to reduce when you're draining any kind of system. If you're going from a four inch line, it needs to either discharge with a four inch line or you need to up it to a six inch line or bigger to discharge it. Never go down in size when discharging a drainage system. We're almost finished up digging our trench for our channel drain. Now a pro tip is to keep some of that dirt either in a wheelbarrow or on a tarp because you might need some of it when you're leveling your channel drain out so you can get the proper level. Now, if you're gonna be putting concrete around your channel drains, you're not gonna to need to put any of that dirt packed in on the sides because concrete is gonna go on the sides of it. But in this case, we're putting pavers back. So we are gonna keep some of that dirt handy so we can pack in this channel drain before we put the pavers back in place. Now this section here we're actually cutting because at the very end where it's going to connect into that existing catch basin we need a little bit shorter of a piece for our run. These channel drains come with an adapter fitting that can easily adapt to PVC or corrugated so you can run it into your main line. That's what we're doing here. We're going to go ahead and hook that on the side and we'll also put a couple of tap screws in this so that it doesn't move. Now, the next thing here is once you have your channel drain in, you're gonna use a long level and you're gonna go ahead and start leveling it out. Now remember, you want that bubble in the middle. And the reason for this is because if you have that channel drain going lower to one end or the other, by the time you get to where the discharge is, that channel drain is gonna be so low in either your pavers or your concrete that one, it's gonna look unsightly, and two, it could be a trip hazard if it is in the middle of a walkway. So you wanna make sure that that channel drain is leveled out properly. Now here, we're just gonna use a four and a half inch hole saw to drill our hole into this existing catch basin. This is gonna be the perfect diameter to fit a bell cup link on the end of one of our pipes. Now I save these bell fittings or bell 
couplings that come on the end of a 10 foot section of pipe because they always come in handy for this. That bell fitting can be wedged in here and it makes a tight fit and then you can just glue your piece of PVC into that bell fitting to make your connection. All right, so we got our channel drains completely installed and leveled out. The last thing we're gonna be doing before putting the pavers back is running water through them to ensure that it flows nicely into this catch basin. And as you can see, we got a good flow going in here. Now the main line to this catch basin does discharge to the street. And thankfully this one is on a four inch line. So we located that pop up and we just cleaned out the elbow to ensure that it would drain properly. Now. Guys, remember, whenever you're searching for a drainage installer in your local area, wherever that may be, check Google reviews. Google that company and make sure that you can find them on Google, that you can find some kind of reviews on the said company. Because I can tell you right now, any company, even if they are posting videos on YouTube, if you can't find reviews on Google or online, there's a reason for that. There's a reason you can't find any reviews on that company and it's probably because they have ghosted customers or they have done shoddy work and they're not calling these customers back. These customers have left bad, terrible reviews, so they just went ahead and just deleted their review platform. So that's just a tip. Make sure you're researching who you are going to be hiring to do work on your property. All right, if you're a paver installer, Put in the comment section below how you cut your pavers. Now, we obviously aren't paver guys. We're drainage guys. But we are dangerous enough with pavers to be able to do what we need to do here and there. Now, we're not perfect by any means when it comes to pavers. But we like to think that we do a decent job. Now, we're using a wet saw for tile to cut this paver with because we had to make a couple of cuts on a few pavers just to get them put back in properly so they look decent. But this was the cleanest and quickest way we had to be able to do it. Now, I guess we could have used a grinder, but we didn't feel like having to use a hose with a bunch of water and just, you know, making a big mess with smoke coming off the paver with the grinder. So we just went ahead and used this method. We have a few more pavers to put back in and then we'll be finishing up with this job. Now, as you can see, we're just using a thick piece of cardboard with a hammer to tap them back into place. It's important that you use either a mallet or some kind of buffering device if you only have a hammer. That way you don't damage or crack the pavers when you're reinstalling them. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sweep in hardening sand into all the joints and cracks. That way we can at least have something that kind of hardens to hold everything together real nicely. And so that'll help with settling and shifting in the future. If you're a DIYer and you're gonna be doing paver work around your property and you plan to put sand in between the joints, make sure you go with a polymeric sand. If you go with just a normal old regular sand, what's gonna end up happening is after a couple heavy rain events, all that sand is gonna get washed out of those joints and your hard work is gonna be for nothing. A polymeric sand has hardening agents in it that allow it to harden. After you install the sand, you are going to lightly mist it with your garden hose. This is gonna activate the ingredients in the sand that allow it to harden up. After about 24 to 48 hours, it'll be completely hard. And then once it does rain, that rain is not gonna be able to wash the sand away. So make sure you go with a hardening sand, also known as a polymeric sand. All right, so that just about does it for this job. And the last thing I wanna add is this gutter downspout that dumps out above the catch basin. This downspout was actually extended all the way down the side of the home and it now discharges on the driveway so that it doesn't make a big mess on the side of the house where this catch basin is. So if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. It really supports us. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, this is SWDS signing off.